Welcome to Graham Kerr's Kitchen. It's really two programmes in one. This is a series that appeals to your creative side. Food that is sumptuous stuff. How could that be? Uh, this is a programme about people who want to eat healthy and reduce calories. Actually, it's about food with an aromatic quality that fills the nose. Oh, sure. But it's also about keeping my arteries clean by reducing fat. But it doesn't mean a thing if the food isn't rich and colourful. Maximise the flavour. OK, but I must have healthy food that I can cook in minutes. I must minimise the risk. So welcome to Graham Kerr's Kitchen, where we get our heads together just for you. And you're very welcome. Welcome. This one is a dessert and super one. This is a cheesecake idea with the most unusual crust that you ever saw. Um, I, I've got to get something on the go. So it's one of these tins, which is uh, it's called light. I mean, everything's called light nowadays, isn't it? Evaporated skim milk. And that actually contains about a cup and a half of evaporated skim milk. And then there are four packages of gelatin, you know. I tried to measure to see how much is in each package. And it seems to be just a little under a tablespoon. So if you want to get it in bulk and measure it yourself, that's fine. So I just want to put the one into the other and just whisk that gelatin into the top just to soften it. And as you see, the heat's underneath, just mild heat underneath just to be able to get that down so that every speck can be used. All right, come through. Let me explain what I want to try and do this time. Because what we're doing is looking at a cheesecake and trying to do something really radical, something different. Because you see, on the outside of a cheesecake, generally, is the crust. And I don't know whether you do this one, but most people seem to. Um, there's Graham Cracker Crust, which, uh, of course, designed the Graham flowers designed by a fellow called Sylvester Graham in about 1830. He was a Presbyterian minister and really got off his bike, which is an Australian expression, um, about, you know, getting um, a whole grain flour once again, saying that to make white flour was just awful, you know, with, without the full grain being there. So, um, you know, when you put, when you make a graham cracker crust, you also put with that fat. So, what I'd like to try and do is to cut the fat out of it, you know, surprise for me, and put something else in. Went ahead and sort of looked at it, and I found that the answer was a fig. Amazingly, the fig actually does that work in the same way that, that the butter seems to do. But, of course, with no fat whatsoever, and huge amounts of fibre, which I love. All right? So, um, it, it's really quite a different technique. So, if you'd like to see how it's done. Ready? Come on, let's have a go. Good. I'm just getting some green marker off myself. I seem to get myself stabbed with marker pen every time. Now, let's have a look and see how this is doing. Um, if you put it over, uh, the gelatin over a little heat and then just whip it together, it shouldn't take too long to be able to get out. Let's have a look and see how that's done. Um, it's a bit hard to tell. It's, later on, I'll show it to you with, with water. But this one, if you look at the back of the spoon, there's still some little tiny flecks there um, that, that are still uh, haven't dissolved. So just keep it on there and make sure that it dissolves absolutely before you add it. Great. OK, let's have a look at the fig itself. And this is the one that I wanted to show you. The figs, I've got just 18 of these little fellas. Uh, it, it's about a cup and a half of figs altogether. And each of these, when you get them, have got a little curly top on them, which is quite indigestible. There's no way that, that you can get that stalk and, and eat that. Well, I suppose there is. It's high fiber. Well, you already know about it, haven't you? started to chew into it. Um, cut into the center. If you've never cut into the center of a fig, you're in for a great surprise. Look at the tiny little seeds that there are there. As a matter of fact, if you take, if you've got, um, you know, um, false teeth, I'm terribly sorry to be personal like this, but I've got a false tooth in the front, so I know. Uh, I got it knocked out by an Australian playing golf, by the way. Um, if you've got uh, false teeth and one of those little seeds gets underneath, it's bad news. But if you don't have false teeth, it's wonderful because you can crunch all the way around your teeth. Wonderful texture. All right. So you've got 18 of those and a, a small. <laughs> 
17 and a half, um, and you've got a small um, a processor like this. It needs to be a fairly small one because I'll show you how it works. And one cup of the graham crackers. Those are the standard graham crackers that go into it. And then just um, push the rest of the 18 on the top and top it off with the rest of the graham crackers. They were. So it's in layers when you're setting it up. Um, that on the top surface and dial it up to about six on my machine anyway and, and pulse it. If you've got a pulse, that you, it doesn't run it but it actually does it like that, that starts to get the things generally sort of agreeably combined. Right? Then run it. And what's going to happen now as this is running round, you've got the, gr the dry graham cracker crust and you've got the sticky piece of fig and they're getting to know each other. And they're really sort of linking arms together and gradually going round and round and round. And what you'll see, and it doesn't take but about 35, 40 seconds, it's just beginning to happen now. They're beginning to clump together and become a real dough in there. So it's just coming up. See, now it begins to start to clump. And the moment that it starts to clump, watch it carefully. That's it. OK, stop it the moment that it clumps together. And you've got a tremendous stuff. <laughs> look, look at it. I nearly called it mixture, but I know I mustn't do that. Uh, this, and there it is down in the top. Now, uh, with a certain amount of water, uh, and, and water is, is fine for this purpose, you, you, you can't do it with just your bare hands. If you do it with your bare hands, it's sticky and it's a horrible experience. But if you just get a little water on the board and, and just turn it around like this, you've got a piece of dough which is ready to be able to be used. Now, what I do with this one, where is it? Here we go. This is a small spring form pan. And this is one about seven inches. And normally, you go about nine inches. So um, the, the, the mix, if you've got a nine inch one, it's not going to reach the top. But if you can find one of the seven inch ones, I think they're better for the, ve for the reason that you can get a smaller slice and yet a taller s slice. Taller, but shorter. And that way, it, it has a good appearance, and you don't have quite so much to eat. <laughs> it looks great. And that cuts down on the calorie value. OK. So what I've done, I've done several different ways here, but um, just get it in a nice round shape, put it in the bottom like that, and then press it out with your fingers, just like that. Press it all the way around so that you've got the base at about a quarter of an inch. Um, it, it shouldn't be, you know, heavy at all. And spread it out to a quarter of an inch thick. Just get, and, and just, if you go through, doesn't matter, just get a piece and just patch it up. And then, um, just get your fingers at the sides and then just pull it up the sides. Now this takes about three or four minutes and it's a bit fiddly, so. But I mean, I'm sure you've managed to do that and see after that if I can keep looking at you and then do this. Here's the one that's done. Um, just completely surrounded and ready for the mix. All right, let's put that on one side and have a look at the mix. This means uh, getting a blender. I hope you've got a blender of some kind. And then into the bottom of the blender, have to go back to this and see how this is doing. Ah. Let's just do that check once again. There isn't a single fleck in that. That is completely clear. Good. All right, just warmed up enough. Oh, five minutes. Don't boil it, but just warm it up. And look, you see, it's, it's creamy. It's almost like it, it, it has, you know, thick dairy cream in it, which, of course, it hasn't. Um, and then here, three quarters of a cup of the soft brown sugar. Give or take a little bit off the side. Four tablespoons full of cocoa powder. Now that gives it that chocolate appearance, and th this is the cocoa powder that I have. By the way, this one here is called Dutched. You see how it's darker than this one? This one's got an alkali in it, which neutralizes the acidity in chocolate. I find it's easier to mix, and it, it seems to be less acid as well. Okay, two teaspoonfuls. Measure this one, because it's got to be exactly accurate, because you, you can ruin it if you put too much, of vanilla extract. Pop it in, the real stuff, nothing false. Slap the top on and whiz it, okay? Now, immediately, that's what I like about the Dutch chocolate. Immediately, that goes in and that's just fine. Um, when you... Oh, <laughs> sudden noise. Now, three cups altogether of a small curd 
low-fat cottage cheese. And do please add this one cup at a time and let it really incorporate. Wait for the whole to appear and, and go for it. It takes about five, six minutes for that to actually take place. So, um, thank you. I didn't want to compete with it. Um, here's the one which has been done five or six minutes. And I leave one cup for the end, just one cup. And then stir in one of those cupfuls of the, of the non-fat, no, well, low-fat cottage cheese. And that gives me a, a kind of um, textural change. Otherwise, it's really rather like pudding, you know, in the middle, and, or a custard. But this, this gives me a chocolatey, vanilla-flavored, gorgeous combination. And all you need to do is to shove that in the refrigerator for a couple of hours, all right? And pull out the one that's set. <laughs> wouldn't, you, wouldn't you love it if you had this, this sort of thing available? Okay. Now, then with this spring form, you just simply do a clip like that, okay? And pull it off. Isn't that, that that's, I think the person who invented that takes the biscuit for being the most inventive person I've ever known. I'd love to know who he is. And if you're still alive, do let me know, because I think you're terrific. Um, then you cut the slice, and this is the slice that we've, um, that we've uh, looked at in terms of this. And, and warm, warm a knife up um, first, just a little bit. Oh, good. Look, look, look. See how that sets up? Now, look at that. Just see how that comes out. And see the flex on the side. Aren't they beautiful? If you didn't have the flex on the side, it wouldn't be quite the same. And take a little um, powdered uh, cocoa and just to sprinkle it around the plate just to let people know that you've got some. <laughs> okay, come on, let's see the numbers. Whoa, oh, like it, that's nice. Ah, it's kind of, I, we, we should have a different name for it. What about the Milky Way or something? Or the Sagan Cheesecake? Right, that's what it looks like, and this is what we tried to do, to take the fat out of the crust and to put the fig in in its place. And so I, I think it works. Let's have a look and see how the numbers react to this, because that's the important thing. All right, so instead of the classic cheesecake, in this case, this one is a classic chocolate cheesecake that I've compared it to, you have 413 calories, that's what it takes. So this one is 210. So we're over 200 saved to begin with. Okay, the fat's 28, which is almost half a day's supply of fat, you know? Um, and so this is down to only three grams, one of which is saturated, which means that when you actually multiply the total number of grams by nine and then express it as a percentage of the total calories, <laughs> which is the way you get a percentage of calories from fat, it comes to only 11% for a slice of cheesecake, 11% calories from fat. Um, and then cholesterol, look at this, six. <laughs> it's hardly worth counting. And then 292 in sodium. Dietary fiber goes up because of the figs to three, which I'm always thrilled about. And let's have a look. Oh, look at that. It's tender and the crust there. Mm. Mm. Remember I told you it has a crunchiness? When the figs are doing their thing, there's just a marvelous little bite to it. And it really works well, okay? Don't forget to stir a little bit so you get the flex in like that. All right, now, as always, springboarding is really important. And this time, what I'm going to do in springboarding is I'm going to take a vegetable. Because we're told to eat up vegetables and stop eating sweets and things. Oh, do you think it would be too sneaky if we actually got a vegetable and made it into a dessert and made it into a cheesecake? Anyway, because, oh, I'm eating my vegetables. Well, I'll show you how it's done. Good. That's going nicely. Um, what I put on here was just the same as before, except in this case, no evaporated skim milk, just plain water. A cup of water and the four envelopes of the gelatin. And that now, or that, that little bubbles in there because there's not a speck of gelatin that hasn't melted out. Again, very low temperature, don't ever boil it. And it's so important to do that first, otherwise you'll get an oozy um, you know, mix. All right, um, just exactly the same as I did before, except on this occasion, there is, uh, in with the 18 figs, 
These little chocolate wafers, I hope you've seen these, they're, they're very um, crisp and they break easily and you buy them in packets and they're called chocolate wafers. <laughs> um, look for them in the supermarket, they're quite fun. Okay, so um, just turn that on. Again, this for me is six. Um, give it a quick pulse first of all. Don't forget that, by the way. If you've got an old-fashioned machine, then you can turn the switch on and off, you know, to be able to pulse it first. When it's done that, then you can, then you can run it. It's really just simply to get the dry crumbs and the sticky figs, you know, well integrated together. It's such an interesting idea, this one. Works well every time. Think of springboarding. You've got some favorite cookies. Say you know the macaroon, you know, with the coconut. <laughs> Not too many of those. Um, those macaroon biscuits, I could put those with things and come up with a delightful crust on the outside. Maybe some peppermint in there at the same time would do it well too. All right, see when it starts to go at that precise moment, cut it down. And there it is. Now, there, that becomes then a chocolate uh, fig crust. Now, I don't have to mold that up for you. You know exactly how we did that before. And what I want to do is to get this mix on, because this is really different. Um, so, uh, to begin with then, the, the same basic gelatin structure goes into the bottom and uh, just pour that in. And then the three quarters of a cup of soft brown sugar. And, you know, it's just the same as white sugar, come on. But it, they add a little molasses back in it to color it. Um, very sweet. And you may even, when you actually taste this, want to get the sweetness down a little bit. Here, instead of the vanilla, uh, this is a marvelous little collection. Um, I've got powdered ginger, half a teaspoon for each. Powdered ginger, ground cloves, and ground cinnamon. And that, when you put those together, they complement each other in a wonderful way, because it spices the mix. So just pop that in. And let me see, what else have I got to put in here? Ah, oh, and the cottage cheese. Uh, so. Uh, with the cottage cheese, you just simply pour a little bit of that in, like that, about sort of one cupful, and then start to whiz it up. I always put that in on just in case, you know. I've wound up with this stuff all over the place. The, the only important thing to remember with adding this is just a little at a time, and wait, make sure that you've got the whirlpool, the sort of Alfred Hitchcock look, um, in the middle. If that goes away, you've got to stop before adding the next bit. What's that's doing? It's showing you. See, it's all gone. Creature from 20,000 fathoms. Ha ha! Up, up it comes. And then just keep pouring it in. Okay, so there is two cups of cottage cheese. That's the low fat cottage cheese and small curd. All right, we'll just let that keep on doing its thing over there and show you what happens next because this is the vegetable. And the vegetable here is the butternut squash. Didn't waste too much that time. And then place the blade on the top, press down, and it isn't too hard a squash. If you haven't tried this, by the way, just to bake it and eat it as a squash, it's just wonderful. But um, take about two pounds in weight altogether you'll need to scroop out for the amount that you'll need here. Place it, I, I often place it just seeds and all, just on a plate like that, but you can scrape the seeds off before you start into an oven, 350 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 180 degrees centigrade. Give it 40, 40 minutes, takes just about 40 minutes. And then it comes out of the bottom. <coughs> Quite delightful. See what's happening, you get three. And all you do is just look at that. When, when, it's, when it's beautifully done, it's so soft and tender that you can take a scoop, like you just scoop it out it's so moist and it has such a fine, delicious flavor to it as well. So all you then need is something like this. It's rather like a large garlic press. I, this is indispensable for whipped potatoes and this sort of thing. Um, fill up that cupful and look, it squeezes through. It's called a ricer and it squeezes all through and you've got, it, it's nice and smooth, but yet there's just a little bit of mouth texture to that as well. So, when this is now whizzed up, and it takes about that time, four or five minutes, you know, um, you can stop it, <coughs> open it up, and just <laughs> look at this. 
Look, just imagine what that tastes like. With that cottage cheese, see how that has gone down. It is creamy and soft and spiced, and the cinnamon is there, and the ginger is there, and it's all just marvelous. Now, you notice that I didn't whiz up the vegetable in it, because I wanted a little bit of texture. You see on the top of that spoon there, there's a bit of texture in this, and I want that texture in the same way as I had texture in the previous one. Okay, done. Now, all I have to do is to get the spoon back out of the sink and, um, and add one cup of, yes, one cup of plain non-fat yogurt right at the end. Just stir that in. That gives a little bit of a tart bite to it, gives you the volume that you require for the pain, and just a little bit of extra. There's nothing, actually, there should always be, in all mixes, I feel, just a little bit extra, especially if there's kids in the family. Mommy, want to lick the bowl? There you are, darling. See? Just enough to lick the bowl. All right. Walk carefully. The only thing that can ruin it now is an earthquake. And into, into the fridge. Two hours, and it should be set up so that instead of serving it, you can bounce it in to your guests. It's not that. You, you, you might like to, experimentally, uh, drop down just one envelope of gelatin just to be on the safe side. But it depends how hot it is when you serve these things. I think this is just fine. Yes. OK. Um, just a knife. Heat, a, heat it up just a little bit, first of all, for serving. Um, this is, this is the, the kind of shape and size, just like the one we did before, um, that you can get with the numbers that I've got. A plate, and I'll tell you, I am beginning to enjoy the baking and dessert process. Look at that, will you look at that? Nice. All right. Now, if you get a very, <coughs> if you get an orange, and you get that there are little peeling devices which you can actually score the outside of an orange, uh, very thin slices, l l like these here. And um, what I did is put these into a pot with a little water and just bring it to the boil and, um, and then turn the water off, you know, uh, throw the water away. And that gives me a piece of orange zest, which is really remarkable because it's kind of, you know, it's a bright note, but at the same time it's... Um, it's not overpowering, which it could be if you left it without blanching it first. And they just throw little, little curly bits of that onto the plate. Isn't that great? Have you might have seen that in some famous restaurants nowadays. They're always throwing little curly bits of things all over the place. <laughs> Used to happen by mistake. No, it happens by design. All right, there it is. There's it is. Let's have a look and see about the numbers. Stands up nicely. You see, it's nice and tall. If you compare this, then, because of that mold, which is only seven inches across, you see how tall it stands on the plate, and yet it's very short. This one is longer, but it's smaller. And so I think you have a sense of, uh, you know, getting a good plate for. Do you? Good. All right. This is what happens to the numbers. This is compared to the classic, which is a, a kind of pumpkin um, cheesecake, if you like. And this one here, I think, could be just sensational at Thanksgiving. You know, think of it. All right, 249 calories under the 300, from down from 366. But look at the fat. From 27 grams of fat altogether, that's down to 4. And from 16 grams of saturated fat, which I really don't like, that's down to 1. That's just 1 out of the 4. Then, that means percentage of calories from fat, which was 65%, now is 13. And isn't that lovely to think that, that a thing like that can just be 13 percent. Boy. Cholesterol down to only 10. Sodium at 252, which is fine for dessert. And dietary fiber a whopping four. <laughs> right now, I've still got a piece of that orange in my mouth. That's nice to chew on. Okay. Now, actually it reminds me of a fine cheese, doesn't it? With, with, with a sort of a, a crust on the outside of the cheese. See the crust there and how good that looks? <laughs> mm. Smooth, spicy, touch of orange there, crunch of the seeds from the fig. It is altogether very good. I tell you what, next Thanksgiving, I'm going to serve this for my family. Mm.
In fact, I might serve it to them before Thanksgiving. Okay. Thank you so much for being with me. May God bless you and uh, keep you and make all of your lovely efforts on behalf of people that you adore, you know, come off like that does. Success. Isn't that nice? God bless. See you next time. Thank you.